Hey guys, today I'm refreshing my everyday makeup drawers for spring. I love filming these videos because it's kind of like a shop my stash and a speed reviews all in one. So in these drawers, I keep any products that I'm wanting to focus on. Some of these things are new products I'm testing that I wanted to review, and then other things are old products that I wanted to kind of rediscover and give like my updated thoughts on now that I'm testing them again. So first up, let's go through what's been in my everyday makeup drawers for the past couple of months. I'll give any mini reviews or updates that I have on these products. We'll take out anything that I want to put back in my collection, and then at the end we'll pick out a new set of products. I have been testing out this Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer for a while, and I finally feel like I have used it enough to review it. I have tested this on just one half of my face a few times to see what kind of difference it makes, and I definitely notice an increase in the wear time of my makeup. I also feel like my foundation just looks a lot more fresh and smooth by the end of the day on the side that I am wearing this versus the side that I'm not it tends to look a little bit more broken up. So definitely have been noticing a difference with this. The nice thing about this compared to the e.l.f. Jelly Pop primer that I was using for a while is that I can apply this and then immediately go over it with foundation and I don't have to worry about it pilling. So that's really nice because it just kind of like, it's just a little bit easier to work with. So I have had this in here for like the past like two months or so. So I am gonna go ahead and put this away but I'll definitely come back to this at some point soon because I have been really enjoying it. I actually have a new primer from Milk that they sent over recently. This is their Cloud Glow, and it's actually a like priming foam. Really interesting. I haven't tried this yet. Oh, it looks like it's leaking a little bit. I haven't tried this yet, but you can see it's just like a foam. I think this is the kind of thing that I'm gonna wanna apply underneath sunscreen because I don't, I don't feel like I would want to put this over sunscreen. I feel like it would probably like mess up the sun protection. So actually, now that I'm saying that, maybe this is something I should keep in my bathroom vanity rather than here in my makeup drawers because I usually apply sunscreen in the bathroom. So I'm actually going to take this out of here. Unfortunately, it seems to be leaking. I have had this on its side, um, so maybe it needs to be stored upright, but I'm going to actually move this out of here and put it in my bathroom so that I can remember to try it out. Still working on my Ilia skin tint. I'm trying to use this up. Technically it expired in February, but um, I still have a little bit left, so I, I want to use it up since I you know, spent my money on it. It still smells fine and performs fine, so I think it should be okay to keep using at least for another couple months until I finish it, but until I finish it, this is going to be the only foundation that I keep in here because I really want to use this up. Another new product I bought recently, this is the NYX Pro Fix Stick Concealer. This is um, one of their new launches. NYX has been coming out with a lot of new stuff the last couple of months, and I've heard a lot of really good things about this. This is a correcting concealer. They also have some regular concealer shades. I got the shade Pink, so this is the kind of thing that I use in conjunction with a skin tone concealer to just kind of cancel out my dark circles. and. I have to tell you, I have been loving this. This actually has a matte finish, which I feel like is really hard to find in color correctors. Most of them are like super tacky and emollient, but this one you can see on my hand there, like it doesn't give any sort of extra shine or anything, which I really appreciate because I don't need any shine on my under eyes. Like I want, I want them to look flat. <laughs> I don't need to add any more like texture or reflectiveness to my under eyes. So really been enjoying this. It does have a really nice pinky kind of like salmon undertone, which is perfect. A little bit goes a long way. I'll just take a little bit, usually over my concealer, I think is my favorite way to use it, just to the darkest parts of my under eyes, and I tap it out with a finger. It blends in really quickly. It adds this almost blurred look to my under eyes, and yeah, I've just been really happy with it. So I think this actually beats my Sigma Color Corrector. This doesn't come with very much product. It comes with actually the same amount that the Sigma Color Corrector came with. They both have 0.05 ounces, which is not a lot of product, but uh, but the NYX Corrector is like $9. The Sigma one I think is 30 something. So big price difference. I think, yeah, I think this has replaced the Sigma Color Corrector. I'm actually glad that I didn't repurchase this now. I know I was lamenting that I didn't buy it during the Black Friday sale, but now I'm kind of glad I didn't now that I found this because I think I like this more. I just like the more matte finish that this has and it's like a fraction of the price. So really, really impressed with this. I would say this has light to medium coverage, so it's not really going to cover up your dark circles. It's not the kind of thing I'm gonna wear by itself unless I'm doing like a no makeup makeup day 
where I'm like just putting on like a few products, I might just put some of this on to cancel out my dark circles. But if I want coverage, I do need to pair it with a concealer. But that's how I use most color correctors anyway. So this has been... <laughs> such a great discovery really glad i bought this i'm gonna go ahead and leave this in here because i've been enjoying it so much i am gonna put away my urban decay stay naked concealer this has been just my go-to for as long as it's been in here but i want to switch it out for something different and i am still working on using up the last little bit of my sigma color corrector i've been kind of savoring it because i do really like it and i will miss it but again now that i found the nyx one you know i'm not gonna miss it as much so hopefully i can use this up by my next everyday makeup drawer update um, but that is what's in here. As far as powder, I actually have also been enjoying the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. This I've just been using as a translucent setting powder for my face. I don't like it on the under eyes. I really just, I think I just prefer a loose powder on the under eyes. So this isn't the, the kind of thing that I use there, but as an all over translucent powder, it's really nice. It's also really great if you like went in a little bit too heavy handed with blush. This kind of just like smooths it out blends it out a little bit and it is translucent so I find that I can use it to set my cream blush without it really canceling out the color so this I have been enjoying but I am going to put it away because I want to rotate in a different powder also going to put away my makeup revolution translucent baking powder this is a great loose powder this is what I've been using to set my under eyes for the most part sometimes I'll also use it all over the face and I've really been loving it with a velour puff that's been my favorite way lately to apply setting powder to the under eyes. I just love the almost airbrushed look that it gives. But again, I just want to rotate in a different powder. So we're going to put that one away. Unfortunately, still no pan in my e.l.f. putty bronzer. I really thought that I would hit pan on this pretty quickly. I think I'm going to leave this in for another month or at least until I hit pan on it because I would just really like to hit pan on this this year. So I'm going to keep focusing on that. I also didn't hit pan on my Fenty bronzer either. I think the pan on this one is probably farther off than the e.l.f. putty bronzer, so I am going to go ahead and put this one back so I can at least rotate in a different powder bronzer, but um, hopefully at some point this year I'll hit pan on this as well. And then also had the JLo Beauty That Star Filter Complexion Booster. This I think of this as a liquid bronzer. I know there's a lot of different ways you can use it, but that's the best way for me. Um, and... Yeah, really, I, I've grown to enjoy this. It's very, very glowy, as you can see. But when it's sheared out and blended out on my skin, I, I feel like it doesn't look that, like, it doesn't look that metallic. Um, it just adds a really nice, like, sun-kissed glow. I love the rosy undertone that this has. The key with this, it has to be the last cream or liquid product that you apply to your face before powder, because it does set down kind of quickly. So... If you go over it after it's set down with a different cream, it will lift up and start to look weird. So you just have to be kind of strategic with how you apply it. But I love the tone so much. And I think especially in the summertime, I'm going to love this. It just gives a really natural looking bronzed glow to my face. But I will go ahead and put this away now. Okay, I had a lot of blush in here, <laughs> as you can see, but I actually did manage to use all of it. I wanted to finally give my review on these Ilia Multi Sticks. I have two of the blush shades, Dear Ruby and Dreamer, and then one highlighter in the shade Cosmic Dancer. So these are really sheer uh, cream blushes, but you can build them up, as you can see, to have more pigment. My favorite way to apply, really, at this point, any stick blush I've just come to accept the best way to apply those products is to pick it up on a brush and then apply it to your cheeks. That's just the best way to get the most even application. You can swipe it on directly and it's fine, but I just like the way it looks better with a brush first. So that's Dreamer, my favorite kind of blush color right there. It's just like this nude kind of apricot color. So, so pretty especially for like spring and summer. Really been enjoying that. You can see it does sheer out. So if you like a really pigmented blush, you're not going to like this. But for me, I really prefer something that's sheer because I know that I'm not going to mess it up or it's not going to end up looking like too much. The other shade I have is Dear Ruby. And this one looks really intimidating in the stick. Like this is a bright, almost neon red. But because of how user-friendly this formula is, I actually find this shade really easy to work with on my skin tone. This is obviously a really built-up swatch. But when I pick it up on a brush first 
it just gives me the perfect wash of soft red. You guys know how much I love like reddish coral blushes like this. I love this color so much. I cannot wait to use this in like the summertime. I just think it's like so juicy, so youthful. I've definitely gotten more use out of Dreamer, but I've, I've really been enjoying both of these. These have been in here for a while though, so I am going to put them away now that I've reviewed them. But I think these are going to be making another appearance in here very soon, especially that red shade. These have good staying power. I think you're going to get the best staying power if you set them with a the translucent powder. They don't have quite the staying power of something like the Rare Beauty liquid blush. This has really, really good staying power. The Ilia ones, they're the kind, you know, they're going to fade a little bit by the end of the day, but I still have some color on my cheeks by the end of the day. So, but yeah, I really just love these for the user friendliness of them. The Cosmic Dancer highlight. This is a pretty subtle highlighter. I do feel like this, this really just gives like a natural dewy finish to your cheeks. It's not like super glittery. Yeah, it's more of like a pearlescent glow. Because I've been wearing a really glowy foundation, I don't really feel like this adds a whole lot because my base is already so glowy. So I think this is the kind of thing that would make more sense over like a more satin or matte foundation. But yeah, I think these Ilia multi-sticks are for you if you like something that's subtle and sheer. That's kind of like what these are all about. For something a little bit more intense and pigmented and long wearing, I really have been enjoying the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in Hope. This is also one of my favorite types of blush colors. A little bit goes a long way with this one, but this has, like you can see, that is like very, very pigmented with just a small dot. So I don't think I would want to get any of the shades that are any deeper than this because this right here is like enough pigment for me. But with that being said, I still think for a liquid blush, this is pretty easy to work with. I have found my favorite way to apply it. I don't put it directly on my cheeks with the doe foot. Instead, I'll put a dot on my like middle finger and then dot it onto my cheeks and then blend it out with a brush. That I find is the best way to get an even smooth application. But this is a total my cheeks but better shade. Like this looks like the color that my skin naturally produces when I'm blushing. So really been happy with this. I am going to put this away now as well. This is the AOA Studio Plush Blush in the shade Cumulus. I love this liquid blush. It's a little bit more sheer than the Rare Beauty one. Like I will just take a dot of this so you can see how it shears out compared to the Rare Beauty. Yeah, see, like it looks a lot darker at first, but um, you can use a little bit more of this and it's not going to look like clown cheeks. So there I built up the swatch a little bit more and you can see like I got, you know, a pretty bright look. But as I continue to tap it out, it shears out really nicely. So this I would also say is a very user-friendly liquid blush. I love this color. Like it almost looks like a watercolor, doesn't it? <laughs> like a watercolor paint, the way that it blends out. And yeah, this is just such a fun, juicy, pinky red. So really enjoyed that as well, but this I'm gonna put away. I'm happy to say I did use my About Face cream blush in Laid quite a few times actually, especially around Valentine's Day. So there's that color, definitely not an everyday color for me. I don't always love pink on myself, but yeah, I feel like I'm starting to see some nice progress on this. Like the, the dome is just flattening out a little bit. You can't see the imprint anymore. So happy to see that I am getting use out of this and this was a lot of fun for like some valentine's day looks i think i'll probably pull this back in in the summertime because i do think this kind of like bright pink is really fun and fresh not an everyday color for me but i feel like because this color doesn't have quite as much blue to it as a lot of the really popular pink blush shades i think it works a little bit better for my skin tone so really enjoyed that actually more than i thought i would also feel like I really fell back in love with the milani cheek kiss cream blush in nude kiss this is another color that just like I just feel like this looks so natural on my skin. This is more of like a pinky red. I have a lot of blushes that are sort of in this pinky red category, but you can see it's got a lot more red to it than the About Face blush. I feel like this just looks so bright and youthful on my cheeks. And I also love the formula. It's a very thin cream and it has this like, I swear it has this almost like plumping effect to my cheeks where it just like smooths them out. And yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. Tempted to keep this in for another rotation, but I think I'm going to put it away for now because I did get quite a bit of use out of it, especially like late winter. So yeah, I think I just want to put like a completely fresh set of products in here, but this was so nice to have. I guess, yeah, this is the only powder blush I had in here, the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush. Also love this. This is like 
a blush and a highlighter in one, but it's not too metallic, at least not for me. Um, I, I mean, I like a glowy blush, though. Since I'm swatching everything, here we go. This is a pink that I like because it's not too, you know, cool toned. It's really more neutral, and it's, like, impossible to mess up this blush. Yeah, such a pretty soft pink. This is the shade Shimmery Rose, by the way. I love it. It's great for layering. I also love it on its own. And yeah, um, whenever I wear this, I usually skip highlighter because I feel like this gives me just the perfect amount of glow. Then I feel like I really expanded the pan on this ColourPop Super Shock Highlight in Monster. This, this is such a fun highlighter. I feel like for a while I just hadn't used it, so I'm really happy to see some more progress on this. This is such a fun shade, especially with a lot of these pink blushes that I've been wearing. I actually reached for this a lot <laughs> over the past couple months. This was just kind of my go-to highlighter, and I really had a lot of fun with it. So there have been a couple times that I've almost decluttered this, but I'm really glad that I've held on to it because it's just so unique and, yeah, just a fun kind of, like, specialty shade. I am going to put this back, but next time I rotate in, like, some pink blushes, I think I'm going to add this in as well just because it pairs with them so nicely. I really haven't been using setting spray very much lately. These are the two that I had in here. I might have used the Sport Fix from Makeup Revolution once, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I don't wear setting spray every day because I just don't feel like I always need that extra boost of staying power. And this one, of course, is meant for like a really long wearing kind of look, which I just don't feel like that's something I need all the time. But I definitely recommend this setting spray if you are looking for something long wearing. I think, I don't think you need to spend the money on like Urban Decay All Nighter. This does pretty much the same thing in my experience and it, you know, it doesn't have a scent to it, which I also really appreciate. So, uh, but the other reason I don't wear setting spray every day is because a, a true setting spray is going to have denatured alcohol in it because that's what really like dries down and locks your makeup in, which I don't think is harmful to use every now and then, but because my skin is prone to getting dry, I don't like to use it every single day, you know, so. Um, but that's that. That'll put away. Um, and then this is the JLo Beauty Glow and Get It uh, Nutrient Rich Hydrating Mist. This, as you can see, I've already used, like, let's see, when I have it upright, I've used about this much already. I mean, it's a small bottle, but this isn't so much a setting spray as it is just like a hydrating spray. And this was actually really handy when I felt like my makeup was looking kind of dry or I just needed to just add a little bit of life back to my face. That's really what this is for. And it's actually the only setting spray I have at the moment that serves that purpose. So it has been really nice to have this for that. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that in here just cause you know, it's nice and small and it's good to have on hand. All right, then here's my everyday eye and lip drawer. Um, I don't think I have anything really new to talk about in these categories. I've just been using the same old stuff for liner, mascara, brows. I did purchase uh, a new NYX Lip and Snatch brow pen. The one I have open here is in blonde. I'm hoping taupe will be a little bit better for me, just because I feel like blonde is just a hair too warm for me. No pun intended. I thought this one was almost done, but it just keeps going and going, so I don't know when I will actually be opening the new one. But yeah, this really does last for a long time. But I love this product. It's so great for getting like true hair-like strokes. And pretty much every day I use this with my Ardell brow glue. Love that combo. Some single eyeshadows I had in here. Unfortunately, the only one of these that I used at all was the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize cream shadow in rose gold. I did use this a couple times. All three of these others I just did not get around to using. I think I was just focused more on palettes, honestly. Um, I should probably just not have quite as many of these in this drawer at a time because I'm just not going to get around to using all of them. The Charlotte Tilbury shadow I will go ahead and put away. This is the shade Rose Gold. Because I did use this a couple times, I am going to put it back and probably switch it out for a different Rose Gold eyeshadow. I'm going to leave this one in for another rotation. This is the Danessa Myricks Infinite Chrome Flakes in Strobe Light. Such a fun shadow. It's just not the kind of thing I'm reaching for very often because it's very unique. This is kind of like a, it has these like multi-chrome iridescent flakes. It's so pretty, but I definitely think I could use this for some spring looks. I think this, this would be really pretty like with pastel eyeshadow. So yeah, I'm going to keep this in. Um, I will go ahead and put away this one. This is the Surat Souffle eyeshadow in Gris Du. I was thinking I might use this for like a sultry Valentine's Day look, but I didn't end up using it. Now I feel like this is just a little bit smokier than what I'm going for as we head into early spring. Um, I'm really just leaning towards like lighter colors, pastels. So I'm gonna put this away and come back to it another time. Let's see, these two I added in from my spring palette rotation. Then the LA Girl Dream Glitter Liquid Shadow. This is in, also in the shade Rose Gold. It's a really pretty glittery topper. 
I don't think I used this at all. In fact, somehow it ended up back in my collection. It wasn't even in here before this video. I put it back to update you, but I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this in for another rotation and hopefully use it at some point soon. Then, let's see, this is also something from my spring palette rotation. I actually already used this, the Hard Candy Buzz Quad. Really fun quad. I also am keeping some new to me palettes in this drawer, but I think I'm going to put some of these away. This one actually just arrived today. This is the new Alter Ego Dream Gaze. Oh, I am so excited about this one. This is right up my alley. I think this is a dupe for the Natasha Denona Pastel palette. I always love Alter Ego's layout better than the original palette. I feel like they always just arrange it in a way that makes so much more sense. I like they have it really like categorized by color family here. And with this palette, they've actually brought back their magnetic pans. If you wanted to, you could rearrange these, or if you wanted to depot these shades, it would be really easy to do that and to just put them with your singles. So really happy about that. I feel like that is a huge upgrade. And I think that adds a ton of value to a palette being able to have that customization. So um, obviously haven't used this yet, but I cannot wait to create some looks with this. I like that it has just pretty much every color that you could want in a pastel. And it does have a couple of slightly deeper shades, so it's not just all pastel, but I am so excited for this. I am gonna put away the Nomad New Zealand Stargazing palette. This is the one that I think they released in January of this year. Really fun color story, definitely not, like this is very out of my comfort zone with the, the purples and like deep blue shades. The shimmers in here are, are all really shifty. I think most of these are multi-chromes, and let me just swatch a couple of these for you because I, I like cannot get over them. <laughs> Look at those. Yeah, just a little sampling of the shimmers in there. They are so unique. I especially love the shade Jewel Box, this one. It's like a gold and peach and green duochrome. And I posted a YouTube short using like a lot of the blues and purples and I had the shade Milky Way on my lid. Really fun, kind of like a galaxy eye. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with this. I think I have now used every shade at least once. At first I didn't feel that strongly about this palette, especially with like the purples and like the berry shades. Those aren't like very common colors for me to use, but um, I, you know, Nomad's formula is just always so easy to work with that even when a color story looks intimidating to me, I feel like it, I just have such an easier time working with it than I thought I would. So yeah, really love the mix of colors in here. I think it's a great mix as well of light and deep. Like you have some light mattes um, and some really deep mattes. You have some really light shimmers and some really bold, intense shimmers. But now that I've gotten some good use out of this, I am going to put it away. And then this is Nomad's newest palette. This is their Ireland Wild Atlantic Way. I did do a three looks one palette with this last week, which I'll link below if you want to see it. But this this is so much fun. If you like green, obviously, very heavily green leaning, but I like that it has a few different shades that complement green really well, like some reddish tones, some um, blues, some golds, and some really unique light mattes in here. This shade is like a spring green, and then Connemara is like a little bit more of a mustardy take on a, gr a light green. Yeah, I feel like these are two shades that I just don't have in any other palettes, which I feel like is always the case with Nomad. Like they put in some really unique colors. So yeah, really looking forward to continuing to play with this, especially throughout March. I think this is gonna be so much fun. So that'll stay in here. I keep like new arrivals in this drawer, so. And then we also have this Lethal Cosmetics Midnight Serenade palette. This one is a lot of fun also. Actually a very similar vibe to the Nomad New Zealand palette this one has, but the Lethal one I do feel like leans a bit more earthy. Like you have some more um, like earthy browns, a, like a greenish gray, whereas the, the tones in the Nomad palette are much more like blue and gray based. But I actually have been enjoying this palette a lot. I feel like I've gotten some very different looks with this one than I have with the Nomad palette. I'll see if I took a picture of any of the looks I did. This does have some really pretty duochromes like the shade Continuum, um, Enchantress, Tempest, um, Starlit. Here, I'll swatch these. The shimmers in here are kind of flaky, so I'll just point that out, but really, really pretty shifty shades. Yeah, so there are some of those shimmers. 
Remember last month I said I wasn't sure if I was going to keep both of these, but now that I've used them both some more, I think I am going to keep them both. At least for now. I do feel like they're actually different enough that it makes sense to keep both. So these I am going to go ahead and put back in my collection though. I do feel like these are a bit more like deep and moody palettes that I'm not quite as excited to reach for in the spring. So I am going to go ahead and put those away, but these two will stay in. What are you doing in here? And pretty much everything else in here is lip products. Um, a lot of lip products to go through. Um, I'm just going to go quickly through these and maybe pick out the things that I want to keep in here for the next rotation, then everything else will put away. Starting with glosses, we'll just go kind of category by category. So these are the glosses I had in here. Um, I am going to keep the Tower 28 one in really until I finish it. This is the Tower 28 lip gloss in pistachio. Um, really trying to have this be the next gloss that I finish. It's a nice just nude pink. So definitely like an easy thing to throw on if I just don't know what else, what other gloss to put on. Um, so this one will stay in. I'll go ahead and put both of these Lawless ones away. I have their Forget the Filler glosses in Juicy Watermelon and Cherry Vanilla. Love, love, love this gloss formula. You can see I'm actually like kind of running low on my Juicy Watermelon one. This is oh, just such a great gloss if you want something very thick and plumping but not like gloopy and stringy. Amazing formula. Um, but I will go ahead and put those away. I have been loving this Kaja lip stain in Peach Fizz. This is kind of a light lip stain and it's actually pretty close to the color of my lips. Um, so I don't necessarily find this stain to be that noticeable, mo mostly because it's just close to my natural lip color, but I love this product so much. It feels like water on your lips, like just feels very refreshing. It's super comfortable, um, and I feel like it just goes with everything. So I'm tempted to leave this in for another month, but I think I'm actually going to switch it out for a different but similar lip stain that I also like, that I want to get some use out of. So I'm going to put this away for now. This will probably end up in my purse again because I just love this product. Okay, here we have some lip liners. I've got two nudes in here. My recent favorite nude lip pencil is the Jones Road lip pencil in Mauve. I love this lip pencil. A lot of times I'll just wear this by itself because, again, this is actually almost an exact match for my natural lip color. So I like using this to just like very gently overline my lips and kind of blend it out. Sometimes I'll wear this just by itself. Even if I'm not wearing any other makeup, sometimes I'll just wear this and it doesn't look like I have a lip product on. And these Jones Road lip pencils, they're really smooth. They're not like terribly creamy, but they're very smooth and easy to blend out. They're not going to be as long wearing as something like the Koki lip pencils, but I also find that they're a little bit more natural looking on my lips. So this one I think I'm going to keep in here. This might end up being a permanent resident of this drawer because I just love it so much. So actually this was in my purse before I filmed this, um, but that's going to stay. I'm also going to keep the Essence Soft and Precise Lip Pencil in here for another rotation. This is in the shade Happy, and this is one of my favorite lip colors, especially as we head into spring. It's a soft reddish coral. Very, honestly, a very unique shade. I don't have anything else like it, so that I'm going to keep in as well. Um, I, I think I'll go ahead and put both of these away. These are the Koki Lip Pencils in Nude and True Red. True Red I had in here mainly for, like, Valentine's Day. I don't think I used it. I really don't wear bright red lipstick very often at all, but you know, it's just good to have, I guess, in just in case. But I'm going to put that away. And Nude from Koki, I'm also going to go ahead and put away. This has been a favorite for a long time, but lately I've just been enjoying the Jones Road formula a little bit more. All right, then these are the tinted balms. A little bit of everything here. The Jones Road lip tint also has been a favorite for me recently. This is in the shade Nude Mauve. Perfect to pair with the lip pencil in mauve. This, again, my lips but better. <laughs> I sound like a broken record, but like this is so close to my natural lip color. It's a mauve, but it has quite a bit of like a tan undertone to it, which is really nice because sometimes I find mauves a little bit too purpley cool tone. This is perfect. Either on its own or with the mauve lip pencil, I just, I cannot get enough of this. This was actually also in my purse up until this point. So this I'm going to keep in here. I also love the packaging. It's a metal packaging. It feels really nice and sturdy. A little bit hard to open though, actually. Like the lid is very secure on there, which is good, but you do kind of have to pull it pretty hard to get it off. But this I would say is probably my top favorite lip product at the moment. Really enjoying this. Kind of took me by surprise. So that I'm going to keep in. I will go ahead and put both of these away. These I had in for like Valentine's looks. We had the AOA Bombshell Lipstick in Kitten. This is like a kind of similar to the Elf Hydrating Core Lip Shine. Um, this is a sheer red. 
pretty nice, especially for like a $1 <laughs> lip product. Um, but I will put that one back. And then this is the Elf Hydrating Core Lip Shine in Happy, another kind of mauve lip color, a little bit more of a true mauve than the Jones Road one, doesn't have quite as much brown to it. Um, but I love this one as well. Also really close to my lip color. I think the main reason I put this in for February was because it had like the heart-shaped core, which I thought was cute for Valentine's Day. But I'm gonna put that away for now. The rest of these are bullet lipsticks. I think this is way too many bullet lipsticks to have in here because I don't even like bullet lipstick that much these days. Um, this is the Kaja Heart Melter in Let's Chill. I think I applied this on top of something else, so it's kind of got like a different color mixed in right now but okay there we go again I think I just had this in for Valentine's Day because it's shaped like a heart um, but I'm gonna put this back in my collection really nice hydrating comfy formula has the pigmentation of a lipstick with the feel of a balm a few more pinky red lip colors I had in here for Valentine's Day we had Urban Decay Art Walk this one is a fun just like mid-toned pink also this one is like a even more saturated version of that this is CoverGirl Thrill Seeker really bright again i don't wear super bright lip colors that often but it's fun to have on occasion and then this is the charlotte tilbury mini lipstick in amazing amal this is more of like a reddish berry color um, i'm gonna put all of those away because i'm kind of in the mood for more like peachy lips now i'm gonna leave this one in because this is just such a fun color and it goes perfectly with that Essence Lip Pencil in Happy. This is the Queen Musea lipstick in Montreux. They have such unique shades. Like, this is like a muted reddish coral, and I feel like a lot of a lot of reddish corals are just like so bright and in your face. This one I feel like is just a little bit easier to pull off. Like, it definitely, I wouldn't classify it as a nude, that's for sure, but it's just, I don't know, it's a little bit muted, and I, I really enjoy it, um, especially for spring. So, that one's going back in. I am happy to say the e.l.f. O-Face Satin Lipstick is finally fixed. Um, I fixed it in my most recent chore day vlog. It's now a lot shorter, but at least the bullet is staying in place. Love this one. This is just like a nude brown, but gonna put that one away because I want to pick out something a little bit more springy. I have a few shades of this Makeup Revolution Lip Allure. They sent, I think, the entire line. I just kept a handful of shades. The shades I kept are Lover Nude, Chauffeur Nude, and Vibe Red. Vibe Red, I actually think, is my favorite, funnily enough. This one, I was wearing this in a recent video. This reminds me a lot of Bite Stinger, if you're familiar with that one, but it's even more bold. That is so much fun. Um, this one I'm definitely gonna keep. I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep this one, but I definitely am now, now that I've tried it. I think it's so much fun. The shade Lover Nude is a little weird. I, I don't know if I wanna keep this. It's kind of, it's very orangey. It's like very light, but very orangey. It just looks a little bit odd on my skin tone. I've worn it like a couple times and I just wasn't vibing with the color. So this one I think I'm gonna pass on. Um, st while it's still new. So that one I'm gonna put in my pass on pile. And then chauffeur nude is a bit more my kind of nude. This one has like a little bit more pink to it. It's kind of like a pinky brown nude. Um, there's that one. I will keep this one. And as far as the formula of these, I've been very impressed so far. They have like a satin matte finish and really great staying power without feeling drying. They don't they don't necessarily set, like, they're not going to be completely transfer-proof, which is fine with me. I don't really want that. But, like, for example, when I wore the red the other day, I didn't wear it with a lip liner. I just wore it by itself, and it stayed inside my lip line for hours. Even after eating, it was still on. Like, this is a very nice long-wearing formula, but it doesn't feel drying at all. Like, it glides on very buttery smooth. Um, doesn't, like, I think if you have very dry lips, you're probably not going to want to wear these, like, or any bullet lipstick for that matter. But... Even if you have just like a little bit of dryness on your lips, they glide over really nicely. So I have been really impressed with this formula so far. So I think now that I have like solidified my thoughts on these, I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in my collection. These two, Chauffeur Nude and Vibret, I'm gonna keep. And then Lover Nude, this one I'm gonna pass on. So those are the lip products that will stay in here. Some of them will probably make their way into my purse after this, but those will stay and then we'll pick out some new stuff. All right, so now let's pick out some new or old new products to add into the mix. I, I used to do these everyday makeup for videos exactly once a month at the start of the month. I think I'm gonna start spacing them out just a little bit more, or I mean, maybe even do them more frequently just depending on when I'm feeling ready to switch over the product. So I'm not necessarily gonna be doing it at the beginning of every single month, but 
I'm thinking this drawer will probably carry us through at least like the first month and a half of spring. So that's what we're kind of planning for here. So starting with my base drawer, I want to add in my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer because the foundation I'm focusing on right now is the Ilia one, and that one obviously is very glowy. And I like pairing a glowy foundation with a more mattifying or blurring primer. And that, I mean, I wouldn't say this is super mattifying, but it's definitely blurring and it's nice for just kind of like smoothing out the pores. So I'm going to add this one in. Let's see how much progress I can make on this in the next few weeks. For concealer, honestly, I've just been craving my favorite, which is the NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer. I just love this concealer. And I want to see how this works alongside the NYX Pro Fix Stick uh, color corrector because they're the same brand, so I'm thinking they'll probably play well together. For powder, I'm going to go back to my tried and true combo. Um, for loose powder, I'm going to grab the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder, which I have in the shade Light. I really want to try the pink version of this powder because... I don't know, I'm really curious about the whole pink powder trend. I know it's been, it's nothing new. I mean, I feel like that's been a trend for like a year at this point, but I, I mean, I'm kind of late to the party as usual. But um, anyway, yeah, side note, kind of interested in picking up the pink version of this. Maybe next time e.l.f. has a 50% off sale. Do they still have those 50% off sales on their site? I feel like they're not as frequent as they used to be, but I'll keep an eye out. Then for pressed powder, I'm going to pick out the CoverGirl Clean Fresh. This is my favorite pressed powder of all time. I know I just said I haven't been using setting spray very often, but I do want to pull in my mattifying setting spray. This is the Makeup Revolution Infinite setting spray. This one is great. Um, it's similar to the Sport Fix, except it does give a bit of a mattifying finish, which I think will be nice because with the glowy foundation I'm working with, I don't necessarily want to add any more glow to my face. So this will be nice if I do want a setting spray, but I, I want to at least not add any glow. This isn't going to completely take away the glow, but it will just kind of like soften everything. So um, that will be my go-to setting spray if I do ever want to wear one. And that does it for this drawer. Like I said, I'm not going to pick a foundation because I really want to finish that Ilia foundation. All right, so then here is my cheek drawer. I want to pull in, I think this is the powder bronzer that I have not used in the longest. This is the AOA Perfect Bronzer in the shade Frappe. Great, just neutral tone. It's a little bit deeper than my Fenty and my Charlotte Tilbury, which I think will be good as we're heading into some slightly warmer weather. I think I'll want to be a little bit more bronzed up. So yeah, I, I've just been wanting to use this again. So that'll be my powder bronzer. I already have that e.l.f. putty bronzer in my drawer. So I think that's actually going to be... Actually, no, I want to pull in one more bronzer one that is a bit more warm toned. Let's do let's do the soul, let's do the Soul Body Bronzing Balm. This this one is definitely one of my more warm bronzers, you can see. And this was one of those products that I was kind of low key hoping to hit pan on this year, so let's get a head start on that. Okay, so for blush, I think I want to pick probably two creams and two powders. The cream blush I'm eyeing is this one here from Tower 28. This is their cream blush in Magic Hour. I love this color so much. This is like my perfect nude blush shade. It's peachy, but a little bit beige. It's not orangey at all. It's just so flattering. It's the kind of thing that goes with everything. So this one, I'm really looking forward to using this spring. Why don't I swatch these just so we can keep tabs on what I've picked. Okay, so there's a Tower 28 blush. The other blush I think will be fun for spring is something even more coral. This is the LYS Cream Blush in Kindness. More of a bright peach shade. So I've got something more nude and then brighter for more colorful looks. Yeah, let's do those two for cream. Then my powder category, one that I think is perfect for spring is my Flower Beauty Flower Pots Blush. Um, this is in the shade Sweet Pea and it's a nice soft cooler toned pink. So this will be nice to have if I want to go a different route with my blush shade, something a bit cooler toned. And then I think I want another kind of dusty peach. Let's go with this one from Sigma. This is their powder blush in Cor de Rosa. Ooh, yeah, there's that one. Kind of similar to Magic Hour from Tower 28, but maybe even a little bit warmer toned. Yeah, I think those four will be a great selection for this early springtime. I think I just want to pick one highlighter. I really haven't been as into highlighter lately. I know, surprise, surprise, everyone everyone says that now, including me, apparently. Um, but I do still like wearing highlighter most days. And 
this is the one that I want. This is the Nabla Skin Glazing Highlighter in Privilege. This is great because even if I'm like not feeling a super blingy highlighter, this one is so natural looking, so subtle. Um, oh, I just, I, I always am in the mood for this highlighter. Always, always, always. It's this beautiful golden peach kind of duochrome shade. Just stunning. So I think that'll go with literally any of the blushes that I chose. I already have a more nude tinted balm in my drawer, but I want to pick something just a little bit brighter. Let's go with this um, Ravy Beauty Effortless Lip in the shade Tulip. This is a sheer red. I really love this formula too. Actually very similar to the Jones Road uh, tinted lips. Very similar type of formula where the first swipe is kind of sheer, but then if you keep swiping, it gets more, more pigmented. And that's about as um, intense as you can build it up to be. So it's a nice sheer wash of red. Yeah, this looks like a great shade for spring. These are so comfortable. I love the size too. I like that it's not like a huge bullet. Okay, I know I said I wanted to pick something similar to this Kaja lip stain. I'm gonna grab my Amuse. This is their lip stain in Soul Soul. This formula reminds me a lot of the Kaja one. Another just soft peachy lip stain. I think this one is just a, a little bit warmer than the Kaja. Actually, let me do a little comparison swatch to see. I think the Kaja one is just like a little bit pinker. Yeah, yeah. So the Amuse one is just a little bit warmer. I love a soft peach this time of year on the lips. So yeah, let's add that one in. I think I'm going to pick another one of these Queen Musea lipsticks because these are such springy colors to me. This is the shade Dorian and it's like a, I don't even know how to describe this color. Yeah, just a really pretty soft pinky red. I really like that. So I'm going to pick out one more nude lipstick. Let's do, let's see, Kindness from BK Beauty. This is one of my favorite peachy nude lipsticks. I think it has just the right amount of peach to make it kind of fresh and springy. Love this lip formula too. It's so comfy. Yeah, I think this is a great roundup of lip colors. I'm going to leave it at that. I think last time I picked a few too many lip products, so it was just a little overwhelming, but I think this is the perfect amount. I already have a couple of lip liners in my drawer, but I'm just going to pick out one more. I'm going to pick one of my AOA lip liners. Let's see, which one of these do I want? This is the shade Satin in the AOA lip liner. Yeah, it's a really light peach shade. That is so pretty. I think that'll go beautifully with this lip stain or uh, really either of these two peachy lipsticks I picked out. Okay, lastly, I want to pick out a couple of cream shadows here. I actually want to pull in my Merit Solo shadow in the shade Studio. I did not give this a very good review. I really did not care for the formula of this, especially in the deeper shades. I found the patchiness to just be like unworkable. This shade, because it's so close to my skin tone, it works for me and I really love the shade itself. Still think this was entirely overhyped and I wouldn't really recommend it. I just love this soft, rosy beige color. And again, I find that, you know, because it's so close to my skin tone, I don't really notice any patchiness with this shade in particular. And this is the kind of color I love to just throw on for a one and done matte look. Also makes a great base. But yeah, I wanna get some use out of this this month. I'm thinking that would be pretty with that LA Girl rose gold glitter that I have in my drawer. Then I'm also gonna grab one eyeshadow stick. Let's do this one. This is the e.l.f. No Budge Shadow Stick in Rose Gold. I think this actually would be pretty on top of the Merit Shadow, or if I just wanted to put this in the inner corner and have this on the lid. Yeah, a lot of options to pair these together or wear them separately. Um, and this is another one of those products that I wanted to try and finish up this year. I don't have a ton of it left, so yeah. I wanna make some progress on that this month. Okay, awesome. Everything fit really well. I feel like the last drawer was a little overcrowded, but this feels like a nice manageable amount of stuff. Really looking forward to doing lots of springy looks. Stay on the lookout for a YouTube short where I'll be using quite a few of these Shop My Stash items soon. If you're hungry for more everyday makeup drawer content, I will link my playlist down below. I've done lots and lots of these videos on my channel, so feel free to binge to your heart's content. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Check and make sure that you're subscribed. 
because sometimes you might think you're subscribed, but you're actually not. So double check down below. I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you're interested in supporting my channel further. I post one vlog and one makeup video every month for my patrons and members, so I would love to have you over there as well. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye! Thank you.